Good morning, children. So, in the last class, we have discussed about the property number seven. So, today let's continue with uh, property number eight. Property number eight: the difference of squares of two consecutive natural numbers is equal to their sum. The difference of squares of two consecutive natural numbers. Consecutive natural numbers means, as we know, the numbers where there is no gap. Suppose one, two, three. These are consecutive numbers, like forty-seven, forty-eight. These are consecutive. These are two consecutive numbers. That means there is no gap between them. Suppose one is five, one is seven, one is. Nine. So these are non-consecutive numbers because in between five and seven, six is there. In between seven and nine, eight is there. So these are not consecutive numbers. So consecutive numbers means there is no gap between any two given numbers. <coughs> that means they are continuing. So that is if one of the number is n, then the other one is n plus one. So therefore, the difference of the square. So that means if we square the numbers, that is n plus one whole square minus n square. Is equals is equal to their sum. That means it is the sum of the two consecutive numbers. Let's understand this with an example. Twenty-four and twenty-three are two consecutive numbers, as there is no gap between them. Now twenty-four square. Now square of this consecutive number. Square of difference of the squares. That is square of twenty-four is five seventy-six, and the square of twenty-three is five twenty-nine. So their difference is forty-seven. So, which is same as the sum of the consecutive number. That is twenty-four plus twenty-three. It is forty-seven. So, this, as we can see, that the difference of the squares of two consecutive numbers is equal to their sum. So, therefore, we can write the difference of the squares of two consecutive numbers is equal to their sum. So, this is true for any two uh, consecutive natural numbers. Now the next one is Pythagorean triplet. Triplet. So what is triplet? A triplet is in this form three numbers. That is m n n p of three natural numbers. M n n p is called a Pythagorean triplet if the square of the first two number is equal to the the sum of the square of the first two number is equal to the square of the third one. That means these three numbers actually why it is known as Pythagorean triplet as we know the Pythagoras theorem. So in a right angle triangle, the <coughs> that is uh, in a right angle triangle, the altitude square plus base square is equal to hypotenuse square. So similar is the case here. That means if this the first two numbers represent see if one of them represent the base suppose one of them represent the base and one of them represent the height of the right angle triangle then the sum of their squares that is m square plus n square is equals to the third one that is the hypotenuse so in this manner you, we can represent this uh, diagrammatically in this manner suppose this is a right angle triangle so if this height is represented by m This base is represented by n, then the hypotenuse will be represented by p. So, as by the Pythagoras theorem, we know that the m square plus that is the height square plus base square is equals to hypotenuse square. So, this is the Pythagorean triplet. That means the three numbers must be in this order. The most common Pythagorean triplet is three four five. The most common Pythagorean triplet it is three comma four comma five. As we can see here. Because three square plus four square is equal to five square, so three square is nine plus four square is that is nine plus four square is sixteen, so it gives nine plus sixteen is twenty five, so which is actually five square. So therefore, this is the most common Pythagorean triplet. So using this common Pythagorean triplet, we can uh, construct some other triplets. Like if you multiply it each. Of this number with two, it becomes three into two, four into two, five into two. It becomes six, eight, ten. Six comma eight comma ten, which is another Pythagorean triplet. So similarly, you can, uh, we can multiply with three. That is three into three, four into three, five into three. It becomes nine comma twelve comma fifteen. So which is another Pythagorean triplet. So similarly, we can go on multiplying with four, five, six, seven. So it will continue in this manner. So this is the most common Pythagorean triplet. A uh, triplet that is three comma four comma five, and using this, we can construct other Pythagorean triplets also. Again, some other types. <coughs> Apart from them, some other types are there like five comma twelve comma thirteen. This is a Pythagorean triplet. You can check 
why because 5 square plus 12 square is equals to 13 square so 5 square it is 25 12 square 144 if we add it becomes 169 which is 13 square so therefore this is a Pythagorean triplet because the sum of the square of the first two that is 5 square plus 12 square sum of the square of the first two is equals to the square of the third one that is the square of the third one again 8 comma 15 comma 17 this is 8 square plus 15 square is equals to 17 square as we know 8 square it is 64 plus 15 square 2 to 5 if we add we will get 289 which is 17 square so that means the square of the sum of the square of the first two numbers it is 8 square plus 15 square is equals to the square of the third number that is 17 17 square so therefore this is a Pythagorean triplet now property number 9 <coughs> which is related to the Pythagorean triplet for any natural number m greater than 1 twice m comma m square minus 1 comma m square plus 1 is a Pythagorean triplet so let's understand this with an example so any natural number which is m for any natural number m which is greater than 1 suppose as we know this is a Pythagorean triplet as we have already discussed 8 comma 15 comma 17 so here this 8 we can represent as 2 into 4 that means twice m the value of m is 4 in this case twice m so the value of m is 4 so let's check the second and then what will be the second and the third number the second number is m square minus 1 so m the value of m is if we consider the value of m is 4 then m square minus 1 is equals to 16 minus 1 that is 15 it is already given 15 and the third one is m square plus 1 so m square plus 1 that is 16 plus 1 it is 17 so as we can see this is 17 so that means this is a Pythagorean triplet and it obeys this this pattern that is twice m comma m square minus 1 comma m square plus 1 so in this manner we can check whether a given in the question a given pattern will be there and we will be asked whether it is a Pythagorean triplet so by using this formula we can check whether it is a Pythagorean triplet or not again take another <coughs> take another one example that is 12 comma 35 comma 37 this 12 we can represent as 2 into 6 that means the value of 6 is m in this case so therefore m is equals to 6 so therefore m square minus 1 is equals to 36 minus 1 is equals to 35 and m square plus 1 is equals to 36 plus 1 is equals to 37 it is given 35 and 37 so any number which is greater than <coughs> 1 that means if the value of m is greater than 1 so here in this case 12 and it is in the form of twice m and therefore we come to know the value of m just if we are given the first number we can find out the second and the third one by using this example uh, so by, uh, sorry by using this formula similarly here also if the first number is given so by using the formula we can find the second and third number so now let's move to exercise 3a exercise 3a it is given Using the prime factorization method, find which of the following num uh, numbers are non-perfect squares. So, we have to find which are not perfect squares. So, let's consider the first one. It is given 400. So, let's do the prime factorizations. You already know the process of prime factorization. You have done in the lower class. So, you have already done by uh, taking the LCM. So, 400. So, therefore, 2. It go, uh, 2 into 200 it is 400 again 2 it goes 100 times again 2 50 2 25 5 5 that means this 400 we can write as 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 5 into 5 so therefore we can see each number is in pair each number is in pair so if each of the number is in pair then it is a perfect square if the numbers are in pair then it is a perfect square so therefore 400 is a perfect square so roman number 2 it is given 768 so let's let, uh, let us do the prime factorization of this one so 2 it goes 384 again 2 times that is 192 again 2 times 96 again 2 times it is 48 again 2 times it goes 24 2 times 12 2 times 6 2 times 3 
so therefore in place of 768 we can write 2 into 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 3 that means if we make it pair let's see what happens so this is a pair this is also a pair this is also a pair but here as you can see the 3 is alone it is not in pair so therefore this is not a perfect square to become a perfect square all the numbers must be in pair but here we can see the 3 is alone it is not in pair so therefore this is not a perfect square so similarly you can check the others also that is roman number 3 4 and 5 in this manner so it is very easy just do the prime factorization and see whether it is a perfect square or not <clears throat> so let's move to the second question it is given that Find the smallest number by which each of the given number must be multiplied so that the product is a perfect square. We need to find the smallest number by which each of the given numbers must be multiplied so that the product is a perfect square. So here in this question whatever it is given it is not a perfect square. So we must find what numbers we have to multiply to make it a, a perfect square. So the first one is 512 so if we do the prime factorization of this 512 it becomes 2 into 2 into 2, 2 into 2 into 2, again 2 into 2 into 2. So if we make it pair, so let's see what happens. So this comes in pairs. That means 2, it remains alone. So in order to make it a perfect square, we must multiply it by 2. Then only it will become a pair. So therefore, to make it a perfect square, we need to multiply 2. Similarly, for Roman number 3, it is given <coughs> 1, 3, 2, 3. So the prime factorization of 1, 3, 2, 3 is 3 into 3 into 3 into 7 into 7 therefore to make it a perfect square so let's see this is in pair so this 7 is also in pair but the 3 is remain alone so therefore in order to make it a perfect square we must multiply with a 3 because the 3 is alone there so therefore to make it a perfect square we need to multiply 3 so in this manner you can do the remaining so question number three it is given that find the smallest number by which each of the given numbers should be mul uh, should be divided so that the result is a perfect square so question number three as we can see it is given 180 the prime factorization of 180 if we do the prime factorization of 180 it becomes 2 into 2 3 into 3 there 5 remains alone so e in order to make it a perfect square we must remove this 5 so therefore we have to divide this 180 by 5 then this 5 will be removed and it will become a perfect square similarly for the second one 1575 5, 5, if we do the prime factorization it becomes 3 into 3 5 into 5 so this 7 remains alone so in order to make it a perfect square we must remove this 7 so therefore we must divide this 1575 5 by 7 then only it will become a perfect square so in similar manner you can do the rest so that's all for today remaining we will discuss in the next class thank you